meetings, KCSE Chemistry Paper 2, the year 2020. Question number six came from water hardness and detergents. Join us as we go through the question. Part A. Water containing hydrogen carbonate. This is the formula in symbols. And calcium ions is said to be hard water. Part 1. Describe one way in which hydrogen carbonate ions get into the water. The expected response here is that carbon-4 oxide gas actually from air dissolves in water. It dissolves in water to form carbonic acid. That is the first step. This carbonic acid then reacts with calcium. Reacts with calcium to form hydrogen carbonate ions. That is the expected response to question 6A Roman 1. Students, if you remember, almost a similar question again appeared in the year 2021. Explain the disadvantage of using this type of water in boilers. And the expected answer was supposed to be that at high temperatures, At high temperatures, calcium hydrogen carbonate, calcium hydrogen carbonate would decompose, would decompose to form insoluble calcium carbonate. So in the boiler, that is what would happen. Now, the insoluble calcium carbonate would have the other name, scale, or a student would also talk about far. Then uh, we end answering by saying that these block pipes, these block pipes in the boiler, or alternative would be reduces thermal conductivity. Reduces thermal conductivity. So this is the disadvantage of using such kind of water in the boiler. To part B, we are told that Analysis of a river water sample showed the presence of the following ions. We have calcium ions, sodium ions, chloride ions, and nitrate ions. A student who has gone through this section of the syllabus knows that chloride ions here would be responsible for permanent hardness of water. And it's, that's where our first question comes from. Name the type of water hardness present in the sample. And the answer is permanent hardness. Good. Now, B Roman 2, describe one precipitation method that can be used to soften the water. The answer here would be sodium carbonate. I'm using symbols to save on space. So sodium carbonate, of course this is aqueous state, is added to form insoluble calcium carbonate. To so form insoluble calcium carbonate. I'm also using symbols here to save on space. 
Once this has been formed, it comes out as a precipitate which is then filtered out. That would be our answer to B Roman 2. Now, moving to B Roman 3, we have a diagram here which is a resin softener. So, candidates, I know in most of our books, we do have the permutate softener, where we use sodium permutate. But I want to tell you that we also have resin softeners as the one that, like the one that was tested in 2020. So, we have the formula of our resin, and you bring in water sample here, which is hard, it comes out as treated water, having been passed through the resin. So, the first question, as far as the diagram is concerned, we were asked to write an equation for the reaction that took place in the column. So here, our resin has the formula RNH3, of course positively charged. It has hydroxyl ions as well inside. So these would react with chloride ions. And we are able to form RNH3Cl and OH- ions. Because this is organic, we did not insist on the state symbol. So that would be the equation that took place in the resin softener. Candidates, please take time and do research on the various options available for softening water. The examiner, we have said one more than once, that has been testing on high order thinking skills. Some of these things may not be available in the common textbooks that we use in class. So you have to go an extra mile and do a bit of research on your own. Part two, complete treatment of water sample required passing it through another resin. Give the formula of this resin. So again, those of us who like doing revision using common uh, revision textbooks, we may be in for a rude shock. I'm sure this one, if you checked, most of these common books, they are not there. So our other resin that we could use has the following formula. There we are. Looks unfamiliar, but we have advised that a candidate who wants to pass with flying colors must go an extra mile to be able to know some of these things. Now, part three, explain why river water sample that has been treated using resins may still require boiling to make it safe for drinking. This one was easy, and the answer here is that resins do not remove. Resins do not remove bacteria. So they don't remove bacteria or pathogens. They also don't remove pathogens or germs. But boiling, we know, kills the same. So again, if you have treated your water using resins, it's always good that we continue to boil before drinking. The reason is as easy as we have stated in the answer to that question. For part C, we have a very big compound here. This is a naturally occurring ester which we want to use to make potassium soap after reacting it with an alkali of potassium. So, this is compound C, which would give us potassium. We are able to get C15H31, then we would have C double OK to be the formula of our soap. Now, there was an option of... Uh, giving the formula as CH3, 
CH2 which appears 13 times and then CH2 then C double O K as another option we even had a third way of writing this CH3 CH2 appearing 14 times and then C double O K as the other way of writing the formula of your potassium salt part 2 we are told to state one difference in the properties of potassium and sodium salts here I have three differences a student was supposed to only do one but uh, I will give three so that you pick ones that you are familiar with so potassium soaps are they are soft or mild while sodium soaps are harder sodium soaps are harder that's the first difference number two Potassium soaps are more soluble in water. They are more soluble in water than sodium soaps. That's another difference. And lastly, potassium soaps lather easily. Lather more easily. Let's say so. They lather more easily than those of sodium those would be the three differences that uh, a student would think about in that section now to the last question part d we have been given a formula of a detergent this is a soapless detergent and then we are being asked with reference to the formula given identify the hydrophobic and hydrophilic parts of the detergent so hydrophobic is normally the tail that has a long chain of carbons and hydrophilic is the head that gets attracted to the water. So using this formula it was very easy to do. The tail would be CH3, CH2 which appears 10 times and then you would cut this as at CH2 with a negative charge. But even if you didn't put the negative charge we would still give you the answer so there was an option of just stopping at uh, CH2 like uh, indicated here and then for the hydrophilic part we go for the head the head is starting at O S O 3 N A if you like you'd put the charges but even if you didn't put the charges the examiner would still give you the mark so student up to that end, we've come to the end of that and we've gone through hardness of water and detergents. One thing that comes out clearly is that let us not rely so much into the books that are provided to us in classroom. Let's go an extra mile to be, to be interested in knowing more through own research. I want to wish you all the best and thanks for watching.